Good morning, everybody. It is Friday, September 16th, 541 a.m. Central. As I speak here, December corn futures down four and a half at 673. November soybeans down eight and three quarters at 1442 and three quarters. December Chicago wheat down three and three quarters at 841 and a quarter. December Kansas City wheat down two and a half at 923 and three quarters. December spring wheat down two and a half at 926 and a quarter. If you guys are listening on the podcast, as always, appreciate it. Leave me a rating or review on that Apple Podcast app if you wouldn't mind. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, leave me a comment. All of those things will help YouTube to help me to grow this channel. If you'd like some additional information from me, guys, go to my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Lots of charts, graphics, weather information, all my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Yesterday, I did a mailbag video. And in these mailbag videos, I take a whole bunch of subscriber questions uh, from the prior, say, seven to 10 days and uh, try to discuss or answer them. Uh, the, the big one and probably the most popular question or the one I had the most feedback on was how aggressive should a young farmer be with 2023 grain sales? I had one subscriber write in and said, Joe, you know, I'm a younger farmer. I've got a lot of debt. I don't have storage. Uh, what should I be doing for 2023? So I tried to answer that question. In addition to some other stuff regarding uh, rolling HTAs for November, uh, soybeans, December corn, also some balance sheet work. We ran some different yield scenarios. Uh, this is like a 20-minute video. There's a whole bunch of stuff in here. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, sign up today. 50 bucks a month. Cancel at any time. No other fee. No other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else. I promise. China will reportedly impose sanctions on the CEOs of U.S. defense companies. Reuters reports this morning that China will sanction the CEOs of Boeing Defense and Raytheon over their involvement in Washington's latest arms sales to Taiwan, which was approved earlier this month. The sales included a bunch of anti-ship missiles and air-to-air -air missiles. A Chinese foreign ministry spokesperson said this. The Chinese side once again urges the U.S. government and relevant entities to stop selling arms to Taiwan and U.S.-Taiwan military contacts. The sanctions are being imposed in order to protect China's sovereignty and security interests. Now, earlier this week, we had talked that the United States was preparing a potential package of sanctions against China in order to deter an attack on Taiwan. So this is not good stuff. I mean, I don't know necessarily that this is like the start of a second trade war, but it doesn't look good. These sort of tensions, uh, whether it be military or, or trade type stuff, sanction type stuff, it's not good given the fact that China is such a, a tremendously large customer when it comes to our U.S. agricultural products. So these are all stories that we need to keep an eye on. Uh, again, the last thing we need, of course, is some sort of trade war with China. Argentina faces severe drought ahead of corn planting. Experts cited by Reuters indicated that key corn growing areas are facing the driest conditions in 30 years ahead of planting. Corn planting in Argentina typically begins in mid-September. A lot of areas will be delayed this year due to these dry conditions. The Rosario Grain Exchange Exchange's uh, chief economist said this, this is one of the most complex situations we've seen in recent decades. We have to say it is the worst planting scenario for corn in the last 27 years. He added that the exchange would likely cut its corn acreage estimate later this month. Uh, USDA projects that Argentina will be the world's fifth largest corn grower this year behind the United States, China, Brazil, and the EU. Argentina is slated to be the world's third largest corn export border behind the U.S. and Brazil. So uh, this is a big deal potentially. It's very early. I was looking at the forecasts this morning. There's a little bit of rain for some of these corn growing areas. Do those rains hit? I'm not too sure, but uh, absolutely something to be aware of. And I'll be talking a lot more about South American weather uh, as the growing season uh, begins here. NOPA's August soybean crush number was pretty close to expectations. Members of the no National Oil Seed Processors Association, or NOPA, crushed 165.5 million bushels of soybeans in August. That was slightly below the average trade gas, which was about 166. 
Uh, this print was down 2.8% versus July, but up more than 4% versus the same, uh, same month last year. So soybean processors, j just like when it comes to ethanol production, soybean processors will typically accelerate output in those post-harvest months, October, November, December, uh, into January. Those are your best months. So right now we're kind of just waiting on harvest deliveries and you should see um, uh, soybean crush accelerate quite a bit here over the next uh, six to eight weeks or so. U.S. drought remains active. Uh, U.S. corn areas experiencing a drought total 30%. That number was also 30% the same week last year. U.S. soybean areas experiencing a drought total 23% down slightly from 26% the same week last year. Winter wheat is probably your most immediate problem here. U.S. winter wheat areas experiencing a drought total 54% versus 33 the same week last year. And that's an immediate concern because, you know, farmers in the Southern Plains in particular, that's where the worst of your drought is. Northern Plains also, but I mean, a lot of the West, um, Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, Nebraska, South Dakota, Colorado. I mean, those areas, those are your big HRW wheat growing areas. And this is going to be a, a problem. There's not a ton of relief in sight. This drought is pretty severe in, in some of these winter wheat areas. So I think in as it relates to the markets, as it relates to uh, drought and the immediate concern, it's probably in your HRW wheat areas. You know, the row crop growing season's coming to a close here. I know we've got drought in some areas of the Western Corn Belt, even the Central Corn Belt. That's not really, I, I think, the biggest issue immediately right now. Your biggest issue is the drought in the Southern and, and Central parts of the Plains, I think. USDA released, finally, uh, an export sales report yesterday after weeks of delays. Uh, there was nothing really phenomenal here. I'll give you guys um, just a, a simple look at where we're at relative to the last 10 years. Uh, for the current marketing year, in regard to corn, total export commitments for the current marketing year are the seventh best of the last 10 years seasonally. So relative to the last 10 years, we're not doing great in regard to corn. Uh, a big part of that is that Chinese commitments uh, in regard to U.S. corn are down like 70% versus the same period last year. They just haven't bought a ton of corn. Now, soybeans are the opposite. Uh, soybean commitments for the current marketing year are the second best of the last 10 years seasonally. So we've got a really good looking soybean book. Uh, wheat sales are bad. Total export commitments for the current marketing year are the ninth best of the last 10 years uh, seasonally. So second worst uh, in the last 10 years for wheat. So that's kind of where we stand here after this uh, data dump. And uh, it's good that USDA is finally uh, back online here. Looking at the weather this morning, we've got some rains over the western part of Iowa, kind of scattered stuff. Some rains over um, central, south central Kansas. Uh, Minnesota's got some scattered stuff, maybe a little bit of North Dakota. Uh, next seven days, you're going to see some rains in quite a few places. A lot of Nebraska, um, Iowa, northern half of Illinois, northern part of Indiana. Uh, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and then lesser amounts in, in some areas of the plains and out into the west. Uh, your uh, mid-south, uh, southeast, uh, Gulf Coast going to be more kind of on the dry side. 6 to 10 is, is dry for a lot of the Corn Belt or below normal in terms of precipitation. Uh, far western areas and some of the plains could actually see above normal precipitation. Temperatures um, above normal to normal-ish. Uh, we're not going to see any early frost or uh, anything this year impact the crops the way that it looks. The cattle market uh, finished the day higher in live cattle yesterday and mostly lower in feeder cattle. Cash cattle was 140 to 142 in the south yesterday, 143 in the north. Uh, we'll see what develops today. U.S. dollars a little bit higher. The stock market's off. Uh, the S&P is down 30 points ahead of the cash open. The Dow Jones down 200. Bonds off a little bit. Gold's down 7 bucks. Crude oil is up 67 cents in the November WTI at 85.31 last trade. Everyone have a wonderful weekend. I will talk to you Monday morning.